Hello friends. Today we're taking a second look at Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 10. This is such a rich passage, isn't it? Becky made that very comment to me just a few days ago. In fact, all of Ephesians chapters 1 through 3 are rich. This is theology at its best. You probably noticed that this passage does not instruct us, the readers, to do anything. We don't get into the imperatives of Ephesians until the beginning of chapter 4, by the way. Well, there may be one imperative in the first three chapters, and that's the word remember in chapter 2 and verse 11. Well, what does this text do? It only states what God has done in Christ. So what do we learn about God in this passage? Not only did he raise Christ from the dead by his mighty power, he raised the people of Christ from the dead as well, verses 1 through 5. He has seated us with Christ in the heavenly places, verse 6. He has saved us by his grace, verses 5 and 8. And he fashioned us as his new creation in Christ Jesus, verse 10. We learn that he is rich in mercy, that he has great love for us, and that he is full of grace. And Paul tells us more about God in this passage that I won't mention. But this passage also tells us something of our identity, doesn't it? Who we are. We once were dead in our trespasses and sins, but now we are alive in Christ. We are God's workmanship, his work of art, his masterpiece. And the purpose he has in mind for us is that we would be active in doing good works, works which he himself has already prepared for us. We learn some of those good works in chapters 4, 5, and 6 of this letter. No, we are not saved by good works, but we are surely saved for good works. No one more than Paul repudiated good works as a ground of salvation, but no one more than Paul insisted on good works as the fruit of salvation. Earlier, I said that this passage does not instruct us to do anything. It only states what God has done in Christ. But the implications are enormous for what Christians should do and think. Wouldn't you agree? Surely, proper application of this text starts with speechlessness. And then it moves to wonder and worship. And finally, to obedience and service. How blessed we are. God bless you today, and I'll return in another video once we finish Ephesians chapter 2. I'm so glad that you are on this journey with us. God bless.